What's up? This is John from John France for Photography. And today you're gonna to be hanging out with me behind the scenes at a wedding. This is a wedding I did at the Brooklyn Botanical Garden in New York City a couple of months ago. I'm shooting with the Fujifilm X-T3 and I have a second shooter with me this time. She's also shooting with Fujifilm. She has an X-T2. If you're new to wedding photography, looking to learn more, or wanna see how a Fujifilm can handle a wedding day, this is the video for you. So let's go ahead and get into it. So here we are at the start of the day. I show up to the wedding about an hour early and get to the hotel where everyone's getting ready. Typically if I show up early, I'm gonna go to the bride first, see how she's doing, and do any introductions I need to do with anyone at the beginning of the wedding day. Keep in mind as the photographer, you spend the most time with the bride and groom and their guest out of any of the other vendors. So if you do show up early, it's really good to get in, get some introductions, meet all the major players of the wedding day like the mother of the bride, the parents of the groom, bridesmaids, groomsmen, and just introduce yourself so they get to know you. Yet again, they're gonna see you all day, you're gonna be directing them all day, and they need to know that you're a comfortable person that they can hang out with and have a great time so they're not awkward in front of the camera. If I do show up early, what I'll typically do as well is have my bride get all of her details together for me. This is the most important step in getting a really awesome flat lay. You should be telling your couple before the wedding day what details they should bring with them for their wedding day so that you can have an awesome flat lay. So after I've gotten all the details together that the bride gave to me, it's time to do my flat lay. Yet again, I like to do this earlier in the day so if I show up early, I go ahead and get it out of the way before I go to the groomsmen. Now for flat lays, everything is gonna be about weight. Basically, you wanna choose a scene, which you see here, I'm on this white couch, and I use the main invitation as the center weight of the whole flat lay. Everything else around it is gonna be used for either decoration or color. One huge tip is ask your couple for two of the invitations, not just one. If there's a back to the invitation that adds extra color or a theme that works with the wedding day, you're gonna want that. You see here I'm using this little flower pattern. I don't know what's on the other side of the card, but all I want is the pattern to add in with the green of the flat lays to make some more details. So I'll typically start out with any paperwork as the bottom of my flat lay. When I arrange it, I also like to stagger things. I don't like everything to be lined up exactly perfectly. Having it staggered a little bit gives the eye more to look at and makes it a little bit more fun rather than just having a straight, flat, rectangular, perfect looking flat lay. And also don't be afraid to try different setups. You see I'm just kind of messed around with where I want stuff, maybe if I want anything, and just making sure the weight looks right. Yet again, you don't want your paperwork to take up too much space, but you want the weight to kind of place a little setting so that you can start putting the rest of the details around it. After I'm done with the paperwork, then I usually go on to shoes because they're the biggest detail out of the paperwork itself. Once I have the shoes lined up where I want to, after that will come jewelry. Typically at the start of the wedding day, I like to do all the rings at one point. I don't like to do the ring shot later on in the day because I just don't want to have responsibility of the rings at all. So I'll start setting up my jewelry. I usually like to place it kind of in the creases between the different paper sheets. Any open spaces I have or little details where the papers meet is a good place for your jewelry to go. And then after I set up the jewelry, I'll usually do the rings. This time with this ring shot, I decided to just do a flat lay of the rings rather than stacking them on themselves and getting a close up of the ring. Once I have them in a place, I go ahead and go and grab the engagement ring from the bride. Yet again, I don't like having the responsibility of the rings, so I only grab the engagement ring when I need it. After I shoot it, I give it directly back, as well as the other rings, and I make sure that multiple people see the rings in the box and see where the ring is, and I hand it off to the maid of honor or whoever needs to have the rings. At your wedding days, seriously, make sure everybody knows where the rings are, because it can be really quick that someone will lose something, and the first person they're gonna go to to say where are the rings is the photographer. After I've set up my full flat lay and I like the way it looks, then I can go ahead and start shooting it. I'll typically start out with the 23 F2 for my full wide shot 
of the flat lay. Don't forget to stop down just a little bit on your lens to get a nice sharp flat lay and also keep most of the details in focus. After I've taken my first main shot of the flat lay, then I switch over to the 35 f2 and take all of my closer detailed shots. So I usually take a top down with the 35. And after that, I start taking closer shots of each specific detail within the flat lay. Don't forget to take both horizontal and vertical shots of every detail as well because it gives you more content to work with and more images to submit to blogs or any other online publication. And when I talk about each detail in your flat lay, I'm talking literally every invitation piece, all the jewelry, the shoes, just get a close up of every different detail so that your couple has it. This stuff may not be super important, but while you're there, you may as well go ahead and get all of it. And here's what some of these shots look like. Now that I'm done with the bride's details, it's off to the groom. So with the groom, I also start out with his flat lay. And typically I'll tell him to give me his shoes, watch, socks, tie, and any other details he has to go along for his flat lay. I also like to add in things like the whiskey here as it gives a more manly feel to his flat lay. Keep in mind to let your groom know not to get dressed immediately at the start of the day so that things like his socks look fresh and they don't look like they had sweaty feet in them or anything. <laughs> I didn't get any footage of me putting together the flat lay or the groom getting ready, but here are a couple of pictures of the location I chose for him. It was outside on the balcony of his hotel room. Also when you're getting your groom ready, try to have someone help him get ready as well. It really sets the mood for the photos and it gives a fun aspect to him getting ready as well. As you know, the groom is going to get ready very quickly, us guys we can get dressed very fast and to make the photos more meaningful, having his brother or his dad or his best friend, someone who will joke around with him while he's getting ready really adds to much better photos. You see here after getting him dressed, we're doing his shoes, taking a couple shots of that. Again, all the wide shots will be with my 23 F2 and all the close ups I take will always be with the 35 F2. And there's my second photographer, Angela. She's also shooting Fujifilm for the day. She's using the X-T2. It's really awesome to have the same camera system on your wedding days with your second photographer. So we're finishing up the groom getting ready. Again, I'm having his dad help him put his jacket on. That gives me a place for them to interact with each other and have a little bit of fun. After they get ready, I'll have him straighten them out, make sure he looks okay. And then if they want to hug or handshake or anything like that, I'll have them do that as well and get a photo of that. Like everything's very candid, so unless I'm asking you to look at the camera, just don't. Um, Y'all interact with each other, that's that's the point of today, not being like, hey, John, hey, John. Um, so you all just scoot back some, and let's actually, Alex, just put you kind of in the center right here. Um, could someone turn that TV off? We don't want to stop that like television. <laughs> SVP in the background, classic guy. Remember, if you want awesome shots, it's okay to direct your subjects. I do want things to feel more natural and candid, but I also am going to direct you where to stand so that it looks good in the photo. For a toast shot like this, I'll typically have the best man give a little bit of a speech and then a quick toast. I'll shoot this with my 14mm f2.8 because this gives me a nice wide area of the shot and I can capture most of the groomsmen in the photo.
Now we're gonna head off to do the groomsmen's portraits. So three guys on each side. <laughs> Let's uh, let's split you all up. So one of y'all go on the other side. I'm gonna replace him just to kind of even out the height. I don't want one side to be like everyone's shorter. And... <laughs> awesome. So same thing again. Hands in pockets. Turn in a little bit to Alex. Alex, watch out for your tie just a tiny bit. There it is. Yep. Good. Perfect. Awesome. So for your Grimsmith photos, you want more of a neutral background, something that's not too busy. You see I have them here in front of these bushes, it makes a nice backdrop, and also have this cool geometry behind them with the building. Line up your guys, take one nice photo. I typically like them to put their hands in their pockets. That gives them something to do with their hands. And then from there, I'll have them do a couple of things together, maybe straighten out their stuff, joke around with each other, just something of that sort take a couple photos, and then we move on to solos with the groom. So this will be each individual groomsman with the groom. These are usually fast photos, take one horizontal, one vertical, and it may be something silly or funny if they're into that kind of thing. This is something you don't want to spend too much time doing, so literally take a couple of snaps real quick and then move on to the next groomsman and get through them very quickly because if you have a larger bridal party, it can take forever and you don't want to waste time doing that. Now we're back over to the bride and the bridesmaids. At this point, all their hair and makeup is all done and ready, so we're able to get a quick robe shot in. They kind of set this shot up themselves, they're just being spontaneous and fun. Don't feel like you have to control the full day. If they're doing something fun and spontaneous, jump in and catch it, and just kind of go along with the flow. For your group shots, especially in a small area, I usually love to use my 14 2.8. And then also, as usual, while they're joking around during the day, I usually will capture like a GIF or something silly like that and deliver it to the couple. Keep in mind, I can deliver this stuff easily with pick time. If you have any questions about that, you can check out some other videos on pick time. Anyone who's like shorter can kind of come up in front like this. <laughs> um, one over. Is this six? Yeah, come to the other side. Yeah, come come to this side. Okay. Can can someone swap over here? No, I mean if you want to stay there, fine. Yeah, it, yeah, it's uneven. I got you. Odd numbers. I feel like I'm sinking in. Yes. Cute. There it is. That is it. The bed is sinking backwards. No, no. Go fast. Big smiles. Beautiful. Again, pick someone. Give them a smile. After we get our robe shots, then it's on to getting the bride ready. She hops into her dress and I usually tell her to button up to about the lower back so that we can get photos of her mom or maid of honor buttoning her up. I don't have any footage of her getting buttoned up, but here are a couple shots of her getting ready. Again, all of my wide shots will be with the 23 F2 and the close ups with the 35 F2. And make sure when there's intimate moments happening, not to be directing the bride. Just let the intimate moments happen and capture them while they're going on. After the bride gets ready, we had a first look with dad. For the first look, I usually like to set it up where the dad will turn a corner and then see the bride. So for this first look as well, just let it happen take photos while it's going on, let all the emotions just be captured in your photos. And make sure to let your second photographer know not to only focus on the couple. So in this case, I'm focusing on the bride and my second photographer was able to catch these really awesome shots of the mom being emotional seeing the first look.
After we finished up with the first look with Dad, we went along and did the bridesmaids photos as well. For this, I used the exact same spot as the guys. The guys were gone at this point, so we finished up with the ladies and then got them into the car to go to the venue. Again, I also do my solos with each bridesmaid and just make everything really fun and take a couple of quick shots. Now that we finished with the getting ready part of the day, it's time for the first look. Typically, you have two options for your wedding day. Traditional, where you have the ceremony when the couple sees each other, or first look day, where you have the couple seeing themselves before the ceremony. With a first look day, make sure to get the portraits of your couple directly after the first look. This saves you a lot of time throughout the day, and also it makes it more comfortable for the couple because they can enjoy more of their coxa hour rather than wasting it having to take photos. You see, I took pictures of both the groomsmen, the bridesmaids separately. We got everyone ready, and then my GoPro died. <laughs> it was my first time using the GoPro, so I ran out of batteries and I didn't really realize it, but I had my dude Donnie GQ with me and he actually took some footage for me, so big props to him. Check him out on Instagram, links below. He did all the BTS going forward for the rest of the day, which is actually kind of nice. I like the way it looks, so now we're gonna go ahead and get into our first look. I'm gonna station my second, probably in the grass. Break all the rules. Break the rules! Um, I'm gonna be probably back here somewhere, um, getting a close. So the way that the way that we would typically do this is I would get like a wide profile yeah. from over here, and Christian would be like here. Would this work for you? Is he here? Yeah, because well, we're gonna have him turn in like this. <laughs> So is, that, okay. is that fine for you all there? Yeah, because he'll get her. Yeah, that's fine, because I'm going to be like tight like this. Okay, and I guess I'm going to get... Yeah, and my second will be there too. That's perfect. That's exactly it. Okay. So I have the bride approaching the groom. I have the groom all set up, and I let him know which way to turn when she touches his shoulder so that we're able to capture his reaction. I have my second shooter shooting wide on the 23 F2. I like to take a nice symmetrical wide shot and then I'm on the 56 to capture his reaction. Remember, when he turns around and his reaction comes up, make sure to take as many shots as possible. Just hold your shutter down, capture everything, and sit back and watch the moment. Let your couple have this moment alone. Don't try and stop them and start taking portraits just yet. Just let them have their moment. This is a big time on their wedding day because they're seeing each other for the first time. So just keep capturing while it happens. And then after a couple of minutes, go ahead and start your portraits. Josh, go ahead and hold each other. Yes, exactly. Beautiful. If y'all want to kiss or anything, feel free to do that whenever. <laughs> you want to pick at each other's eyes. For yeah. <laughs> Bring your foreheads together, head cuddle. So for portraits during the first look, what I like to do is make my way back to where the ceremony area is going to be. That way I can maximize my time rather than trying to go somewhere else that's out of the way and then also having to use time to get back to where the ceremony area is. Also if you're new to an area and you don't know where to shoot, do not be afraid to just look around and use anything random for your shot, like this random tree in the corner of this area. Keep in mind the best part about photography is taking things out of context. You don't have to be in a perfect beautiful field or something of that sort to get a good portrait. You could literally be at the side of a wall that may not look like 
the prettiest place, but in the photo you know as the photographer that it's going to be great. We also found this really awesome flower field. So we had the flowers here. I was using the 56 to really bring out the flowers. And as you can see too with the 23, there may not be a whole lot of flowers in bloom right now, but I'm able to get them in an area and get close enough that it looks like they're just in this huge flower field. Yet again, taking things out of context. So typically while traveling and shooting, what I like to do is just tell my couple to do stuff while we're looking around for locations, and then we'll just walk to a new location, find a spot, and take some more portraits. And since I'm using two different cameras, one camera is always gonna be my wider shots, and my other camera is always gonna be my close shots. So as you see between these portraits, I have 23 on one and 56 on the other and just have fun with it. Use your time wisely as you move along to new locations, take a couple of shots, do a couple of poses, and then move on to another location. And you can get a lot of portraits very quickly. Also, if you all would love to see more information about how I like to pose my couples, just let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to make a video on that. We finished up all the portraits with the couple. We also did family portraits at this point, but I didn't include it in the video. And next up is the ceremony. I don't have any footage of the ceremony, but if you do wanna check out what a ceremony looks like typically for me, check out my other full day wedding video up above. So next up, we have the full bridal party together. Remember, I took them both separately, so now one big group shot, nice and quick and easy. And then after that, on to the reception. So party time. Everyone give me a silly pose or just like a woo! Woo! It is. Let's get uh let's get a little vanity fair. Come on, three steps. Everybody look at me. <laughs> Awesome, that's perfect. <laughs> awesome, we're all done. So those were a couple of fun group shots we did. Make sure to capture your candidates as well while you have the whole bridal party together. They're usually pretty live, so don't miss those moments. So now we're on to the speeches. I like to handle speeches with the 56 f 1.2. At this point of the night, it's typically very dark, so the 56 is the perfect lens to let in as much light as possible. I like to get nice tight shots of the speaker and I'll usually get just a couple of shots of them speaking. You don't need too many. And then after that, I'll focus on the couple. The reason I like to focus on the couple during the speech is to capture any of their laughs or their tears or just any emotions that they have during the speeches. For my camera settings, I'm at around 800 to 1000 ISO. My flash is at 132 or 1 16th power, and I'm pretty much wide open on my 56. Also, aside from concentrating on the couple, make sure to be looking around the room for any other interactions with other people. I like to focus on grandparents, the parents, and other people sitting close to the bride and groom as well. You can get really fun photos of them laughing at the stories that are happening. So make sure you listen to the speeches that are going on. Also, always wait for the hug. After a speech, do not stop looking at your bride and groom. Typically, they're going to hug the speech giver. Always wait for the hug. And now, it's reception time. So I made an awesome video about how I like to capture dancing photos at a reception. Go ahead and check that video out up in the link above. But typically what I'll do during reception is throw on my widest lens, which is going to be the 14mm 2.8. This way I can get in the crowd, dance with everyone, and also capture photos. You can't see it too well here because the GoPro stabilization is really awesome, but I'm out there dancing and bobbing my head with everyone on the dance floor. 
While you're out on the dance floor and taking photos of people dancing, just pay attention to whoever is the most lit. Find crowds of people when they start doing something hype or they start dancing with each other or just doing something funny and make sure you jump in there and try and capture that. I'm using single point focus and because I'm using the 14 mil, there's not really a way I'm gonna miss the focus because I'm very close to my subjects. Typically what can help as well is you make your focus square a little bit larger. That way you don't really have to look through the viewfinder to take your photos. You can just shoot from the hip. My camera settings are still about the same as what I have for the speeches as well. Around 800 ISO. The flash power is around 132 since I'm so close to my subjects. And shutter speed is closer to 200 at this point. And yeah, just hang out on the dance floor and see whatever's happening and capture what you can get. Sometimes I'll also do light painting. At this wedding, there wasn't a bunch of lights in the background, so it didn't make sense to do. But if you'd like to see a video on how to do light painting at receptions, let me know and I'll make sure to do a video on that. I really love the light paintings now. It's really cool. It has all the lights looking like little lines everywhere and the slow shutter speed. It's really cool stuff. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of that. Also, if you see your couple dancing together or interacting with each other, make sure to get those photos. That's basically the main point of the whole day, so just wait for them to interact with each other and get really cool shots of them dancing together. And those are the main tips for reception dancing photos. Here are a couple more photos from the night. I hope you like hanging out with me today on this behind the scenes of a wedding day. Were you impressed with the photos? Do you like the quality of the X-T3? Let me know down below in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like and the subscribe for more information like this. When wedding season starts up again, I plan to make more of these videos. So if there's a lot of good reception, I'll keep them coming for you all. If you have any questions as well about using an X-T3 or any other Fuji cameras at a wedding, leave them down below. I'm happy to answer them for you. And don't forget, if you really appreciate this content, I do have a Patreon page. Throwing me a couple dollars a month really does help because these videos are mad long. <laughs> they take so much effort to do, but I do love making them for you all. So please consider becoming a patron. It really does help me out. And it lets me know that you all love this information and that it helps you all out starting your wedding photography businesses. Thanks again, and I'll be with you all next time. All right.